Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our third series here for the TSL 3 round of 32, day four, brought to you by PokerStrategy.com. I'm DJ Wheat, joining me is day nine, and this is game one between MYM, Mondragon, our Red Zerg, spawning in the northeast spawn position, and our blue Protoss, Zerax, who is relatively unknown here in the northwest position. Of course, Mondragon, no one really knows his shape. I've seen lots of threads speculating on he'll be able to do this, or I saw this one replay that my brother's dog sister shared with me, and uh, no one really knows, so it's time to find out right here. And one thing to note about these two players is that uh, Xerax is not really associated with any team, as far as I know. I mean, there wasn't even one labeled there on his little info plate for the TSL. But Mondragon, not only on MYM, but also been picked up by Team Razor, as was recently uh, given away on his little Facebook status updates. So big props to him for having two teams to Xerax's one. Uh, or excuse me, Xerox is none, so at the very least, Mondragon has enough teams for both players. And in the meantime, we see Mondragon continuing to make drones, no pool yet. Uh, don't know if he's going to be gearing up for an expo, but Xerox planting the gateway at the front, as one would expect. Now, uh, you know, you know Mondragon very, very well as a Brood War player. And uh, speaking Hi. just about the current uh, APM right now, it looks like uh, Mondragon actually really, really down there. What was his APM like in Brood War? Well, I mean, a lot of Brood War players who, you know, right when the transition to StarCraft II came up, were hovering around 300 to 350 or so. Mondragon almost always was between 150 and 200. But whenever you watched him play, he was very crisp with his clicking. A lot of players had a tendency to spam throughout the game. Mondragon would always comfortably start slow and increase his APM when necessary, which is actually a very, very hard skill to master. But that is what he is all about. In the meantime, I would just like to know with Xerax getting the double gas yeah. before cybernetics core. This is always a sign of either mass sentries or something more ominous, such as a Dark Templar play. Yeah, and we are going to see uh, Mr. Overlord make his way in here, just as you mentioned that. Is going to see the cybernetics core is down. He's probably going to... Nope, he's actually going to go ahead and hightail out. He won't go try to uh, stand behind the Nexus. He'll go behind this uh, other natural expansion, so you won't necessarily see that that is there. And uh, with the drone not on its way over, won't uh, won't likely find out that the, both those gas have been taken. And then you know what? Zergs like it juicy, Day9, as uh, we do see the uh, juicy juicier expansion taken there on the uh, first hatch by Mondragon. No doubt, Zergs always known to be creatures of gross excess, opting for those expansions as quickly as possible, and oh my goodness, a Stargate going down, notice no warp gate wow. at all, I'm very curious to see what Xerox has in store, but either way I'm very excited because he is a very, very air-oriented PVZer, and rarely do you see someone favorite so strongly. There, finally, is the warp gate going down. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm pretty excited to to see this. And then, you know, additionally, this seems to almost be a sub skill set that Zerg needs to have. How do you deal with some of this uh, Prodos air pressure that can come off and really kind of hit with these sort of unique types of timings based off of where you're at with your Zerg build? So I always like to watch Zergs and see how they handle it, pick up things myself. To me, this is kind of exciting to see that eventually this could be coming over to Mondragon. How will he handle it? How will we see him uh, take this on? Well, it looks like Mondragon doing a very Brood War-esque move, taking that third base really fast before 36, which wow. is extremely early in StarCraft II time. Mondragon, though, whenever you do end up doing some sort of very, very low-tech um, mass expand style, you got to get more queens. You absolutely must get more queens there, the essential linchpin defense for Zergs. Yeah, and then also, of course, the creep spread, and you can see there's already a lot of non-creep land here in between all these bases. He is going to get the spine crawler out at the front, but that does do limited coverage uh, based off of you know where this uh, base is situated, etc. We do have the Overlord now making his way all the way around, and you can see that he is uh, you know at least in a position where he might be able to scout some of this stuff, but still has no idea about the air threat that inevitably will be heading his way. That third base is almost done here for Mondragon. And uh, what will we see after that? Still grown enough. 
Wow, this is a very cool play by Xerax. He has those four air units up so quickly, the Void Ray and the two Phoenixes. It doesn't even matter if his opponent had Mass Queen. He was going to be in an easy position to just lift and blast them apart. And there is the Void Ray coming in. He lifts up one. He still is taking some heavy damage from the other Queen, but there's the lift. And it looks like that Queen up in the air taking a good amount of damage. One Queen going to fall. Second Queen taking heavy damage. gets lifted again. The two Phoenixes beginning to wail away Mondragon, scrambling to get that Evolution Chamber up, but already Xerax unleashing a lot of pain, just ripping through all those Overlords. And there is another Queen getting lifted up. This is not even harassment. This is a straight early push. A fourth Phoenix popping in right now. A fifth Phoenix getting produced as well. Xerax now throwing down the Robo Facility as well. This is the Xerax that helped qualify for this PSL. There's another Queen getting lifted. Four kills on that Void Ray. Mondragon at 49 of 46 food can hardly even have enough uh, food to just get into the non-red. And there is yet another, another Overlord falling. Even an egg getting lifted in the air. Wow, yeah, there was a lot of devastation there, and it is not over yet, even though that Void Ray with five kills is uh, down to 28 health and 14 shields as it regenerates. Uh, they're going to march right into the main. You can see all the queens are gone. One is about to... No, they're, that one was taken out too, so there's one being made at the lair in the main, um, and although there is this uh, spore crawler back here, the phoenixes can still kind of dance around that. We're going to see an extractor go down, and this void ray just kind of kind of pick out these drones on the edges here trying to avoid any damage got a little bit too close there's got to be careful this queen could take him out just look does look like it will manage to stay alive so some great success here with this early air pressure but one thing that's interesting to note go to the resource station we see that the protoss is not actually that far ahead of the Zerg. I mean, even if you go to the unit counting station, we see that Zerg has a lot of drones and a lot of infrastructure. More harassment going on on this third base, but keep in mind that this has to do a lot of damage to justify getting that much air this early, and Mondragon just needs to play calmly and defend. So this definitely does not mean that Mondragon is out of the game yet. Yeah, we do have some Hydras on the way. We also see Burrow uh, going down with plus one air attacks as well. See some Overlord spread right around with more uh, with more air units joining. Here's an Observer too that will help out. And look at these uh, four Spine Crawlers completely defenseless. Here we are going to have a couple of uh, Hydras move in. But gosh, with that Phoenix count, you've got to have a lot more Hydras to be able to deal with that. I'm a little surprised that Xerax didn't cry to go ahead and eliminate those units coming out because it's when he's got got numbers of those that that will be stopped but he has backed off he might just decide to go in and attack from another angle looks like he's starting to head over to that back third base of mondragon the mini expo the half expo sees a zergling at the watchtower going to pick that off that air control so important for just gaining general map control and that vision advantage more sport crawlers going down for mondragon at the back and there's some lifting managing to pick off some drones he does lose the phoenix nice little healthy advantage there for Mondragon to be able to pick off some of those uncontested <clears throat> roaches getting eliminated right now as they advance towards the front. That Spore Crawler in the back for Mondragon. Look at that cancel at the last second. Very, very nice play right there with that fully charged Void Ray. Oh no, Z-Rax loses focus and will he end up losing it? He does manage to lose that one single Void Ray and now it is all Phoenixes for Z-Rax. Z-Rax really knowing the strengths of his build, distracting Mondragon long enough to take an extra base yeah, Mondragon also having three roaches making their way over to that third base. There is one zealot there that is uh, going to be all the have to deal with to contest that. Here comes some links coming into the back. Will force a cancel, which is very good. However, look at these two colossus that are sitting here just inside the base. Uh, they could move forward and attack this, but there's not much of a ground force to be able to deal with that. You see some beautiful play here, though, as we see the Phoenixes pick up those reinforcing units. So not a huge attack here by the Zerg. He's basically going to. Not Knock down these rocks, make an easier hole for him to go through. He might attack into this, and he does, but unfortunately, he's just going to get wrecked. And uh, I he think does have burrows. I'm surprised that no burrows going down for Mondragon at any point. Um, looks like he may have just simply forgotten about it. But this is the exact army that we were talking about before the game. Look at how there's almost no gateway units, but a ton of air and a ton of colossi. 14 roaches getting made by Mondragon. I'm amazed at Mondragon's focus in this game. So often you'd see a player say, oh my gosh, there's a lot of air units. I guess I better make a lot of hydras. Mondragon's saying, nah, I'm just going to make a lot of roaches and then just continue to attack you straight up on the ground front and then just defend from air with queens and sport crawlers. Very cool way to completely sidestep that massive air force. 
Yeah, and we have ventral sacks coming into the equation. We've seen some very successful Zerg drops happen. We've got a lot of Overlords here to uh, build up a nice little base. These Phoenixes continuing to pay for themselves as they pull a Roach out of the ground. These four Roaches, however, in the back, taking down uh, yet another path over to uh, the Protoss player. And it's really close to the Zerg base if you uh, keep an eye on it. We are also going to see the uh, Phoenixes uh, scout this uh, fourth base here from Mondragon. They'll continue to move around, make sure. And here comes a drop here in the back of Xerax's base. Uh-oh, looks like it immediately caused those probes to pull back, revealing a Nexus full of energy. Xerax is in a little bit of focus there. But it looks like, oh no, and as he tries to pull back some Roachers from the front, managed to pick off a Colossus. He does almost have that Tunneling Claw upgrade, it looks like. Uh-oh, and there's another Colossus that's vulnerable, and Xerax is going to end up losing that Colossus. A huge blunder trying to manage the Zerg on all these different fronts. Mondragon, oh no, is he actually going to get that second Colossus? Xerax, oh no! Oh, he does oh. lose it! And more roaches swing right into the front Mondragon, ignoring the fact that there are Void Rays and Phoenixes all over the map. And it looks like the Zealot up at the back door base from Z-Rack ain't going to be enough. That Nexus falls. The Nexus is the front under heavy fire. Phoenix is trying to lift everything, but Mondragon, remarkable, remarkable play. Yes, and he's got more roaches on the way. Not sure that they should be scurrying in right here, but he's like, hey, whatever. I'm uh, distracting on several fronts. This time he's going to set five right into the middle, trying to take out any last chance he has. Oh my god, a beauty pylon kill there as it does take down a gateway and a cybernetics core. Could possibly go for a second one, decides that he's got to start going up against units. More roaches coming in here to the third as well. And you can just see they are continuing, continuing to stream in here. We have a few roaches burrowed in his third inside. Roaches just everywhere. Uh, uh, someone grab a can of raid because this is getting really nasty. Mondragon is truly playing this <laughs> with a swarm mentality. This is just insanely clever by Mondragon. Just sending streams of cheap units at the opponent. Just getting obliterated by these void rays. But there's just too much Zerg for Xerax to handle. He's lifting up everything he can. But there's only 15 probes remaining. Xerax trying to re-expand to the front. Roach is there to be able to pick it off. More roaches in the main, ripping apart everything. The Phoenixes are almost out of energy. They can't even lift anything up. And Mondragon with a fifth base in the bottom right, continuing to build spine crawlers, spore crawlers galore. And good game, wow. Mondragon. The complete unknown going into this tournament, playing a style that almost no one has really implemented. That is a cool, cool game by Mondragon under heavy fire at the start of the game. Cool as a cucumber, which is a very, very cool thing. I will remind you, Dr. Weep. Yes. And then easily just swinging forward without anything that shoots up. So let me ask you a question. They, if, if I was to hand you this replay and say, all right, here's a guy, his name's Bob, and you were to watch him play, would you would you come off that replay going, okay, this guy's got some skills. I, I want to see some more, f some more games from him. Like, what would be your initial impressions if that was, like, your first time meeting Mondragon? Oh, yeah, there were a couple of huge moments in that game that really makes you go, whoa, that guy must know something that I don't. First of all, that triple expand low on queen play, right when the Void Ray and Phoenix has rolled in, that's when I probably would have ended up leaving that game. Would have lost so many queens, so many drones. The Void Ray killed a ton of overlords. But you saw Mondragon be very patient, immediately begin getting some spore crawlers. And as he was losing a lot of stuff, he still didn't manage to fall behind in food. And then when the Hydralis Den finished, again, a huge moment for Mondragon. Made two Hydralisks and then 12 drones. Just two Hydralisks. And then no more Hydralisks all game long. Another huge moment. Upgrade started really early for Mondragon. So despite the fact that he was under heavy pressure, he's building momentum slowly by getting those plus um, range upgrades. And then when the Torrent of Roaches begins streaming out, they were way, way more than I thought that the Zerg could possibly have. And they were at two zero ups. Mondragon just ripped Xerax apart again with that brilliant core idea of, I don't ever need to face your air army. I am just going to steamroll you with roaches and speed Zerglings, my fast units. And you will not be able to keep up and kill me fast enough. Yeah, and normally, you know, if someone's like, okay, we've got Phoenixes and Void Rays, what's your answers? 
roaches. They're like, you're crazy, yeah. man. What are you doing? But uh, it really worked out for him. Now, had that stream of, of units been interrupted or had he not uh, gone for those drops, that could have been a lot different because another thing Mondragon did really well is he was splitting his opponent's attention. He, he took out the uh, first that northern expansion. Then he had units down at the southern while he attacked from the front. And, and that ultimately was obviously very difficult for Zerax to deal with. Definitely. And it does mean that though Zerax is still in this tournament, that he has to be feeling very intimidated going into game two. But fortunately, it is one of Zerax's best maps. It is Shakura's Plateau, where we saw him tear apart a number of Zerg players in the qualifiers. So, without any further ado, let's go directly into game two of MYM Mondragon versus the teamless Zerax here in the Team Liquid Star League day three, day four, excuse me. Let's just hit it before I make any more mistakes. <laughs>